No more. That's it. Finito. I am no longer offering private training. So here are my reasons. Number one, my ultimate goal is to inspire millions. When I used to be a personal trainer, we had one hour or 30 minute sessions. Let's just go with one hour sessions. If I work a four hour day, I'm gonna work with four individual people. Now, many times those people worked two to three times per week. I only had a small handful of people that I could influence, develop, and improve and make happy. I just simply can't work with enough people. When it comes to track and field and I'm working with individual athletes is there's a lot of downtime. If I give an athlete one hour of my time of training, we gotta go through warm-ups. Warm-ups takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Then from there, can we really get a 30 minute session in? And within the 30 minute session is you're not really just running and jumping. There's a process of, you know, running and jumping and then coming back to me to get that critique or whatever it may be. It just takes time. So in that 30 minutes, we're only going to get maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes of actual coaching. It feels like it's a waste of my time when that other 15 minutes that's downtime can be used up by another person. So ideally, it'd be more of a small group, such as three people I think fits best as long as those three people are doing the exact same thing. I get this question asked all the time, can I come do private training for triple jump or long jump? Now just really, really think about it. When most athletes come to me, they're simply not strong enough. They can't hit certain positions because they're physically not in a conditioned shape. Why would I want to spend time teaching you how to jump in those motions when I need to get you in physical shape. To break this down even simpler, let's just say you're in gymnastics and you come to me and that's, you know, say I'm a gymnastics coach and you say, I want to learn how to do a double back flip tuck stand. I strictly warm you up and have you do the double flip back tuck stand over and over again. A few things happen. One, is it's dangerous. If you're not capable of doing that flipper motion, you can get really hurt. So the way gymnastics works, from my understanding, is you walk in and you do level one training. Level one training is only like a cartwheel, um, lunges, whatever it may be. Then there's level two, three, four, five, and so on. When you hit certain levels, there are certain abilities or tricks or stunts that you're capable of trying or doing. If you're a level 10 gymnast, you're supposed to be able to do, let's just say a backflip or things even more difficult than that. You're not going to just show up on your first day and be expected or try to do anything off the ground, flipping where it can really injure you. You've got to be in a basic strength and work your way up. If you come to me and say, I want to jump over 40 feet as a girl on triple jump, I want to jump over 50 feet as a guy, show me how to jump, let's do it. I'm not going to just put you in a level 10 position of movement. You can't get there. You're not strong enough. To jump 50 feet is very, very challenging as a guy. As a girl, 40 feet is very, very challenging. I can't just thrust your body and move your body in these positions without any type of initial training. It doesn't make any sense. Basically, my format is very simple. When you come to me, my goal is to assess you and see where you are level-wise. If you're a level five, my goal is to say, okay, level five, you're capable of only jumping 36 feet, 37 feet, whatever it may be. And to get you to 40, I need to get you to level 10 when it comes to that development level. Well, we gotta go train and do lunges and squats, get physically stronger and train our body to be able to handle level 10 training. Once we're at level 10, then we can start working the technical work of level 10. Does that make sense? I've had athletes come to me and say, I just want to jump, I want to get better at jumping, that's it. I tell them no. I tell them no because many times an athlete needs to have strong hips, they need to be flexible, and if they don't have these elements, it's dangerous and can hurt them. Because if I'm expecting them to separate their knees further, or extend in the pit, or find certain checkpoints within their jumps, and they're not flexible enough, it's going to put those muscles, ligaments, tendons at a very vulnerable position, which can cause injury. Plus. Many times athletes are in other sports, like for example, I will never have a football player 
come to me and expect to learn how to jump during football season. It almost never happens. But I do have basketball players that come to me during basketball season. They say, I had two games this week. I got five games this weekend. Since I have Wednesday available, I want to come learn how to jump. No, you're going to get hurt. You're overtraining. Track and field is an event where if you're not 100%, you will not run 100% of your speed. Basketball, soccer, you can perform at 50%, 80%. You can have a rolled ankle and kind of just tough it out and go for it not with track and field. If your ankle is taped up, your overall time, your overall distance will suffer because your range of motion in your ankle is limited. Here is the solution that I offer. Join my track club. Why? Because I know you're going to be doing the off-season correctly, you're going to be doing the in-season correctly, it's going to be under one way of thinking, and then you try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, exit. Get rid of it, try another idea. What I do is, we do five weeks just of base training. Then the next six to seven weeks is strictly an advanced base training. Then we move into track and field specific training. Then we move into specific event training. Then we do our winter season. And then I push you off and you go to your high school season where the average has been athletes typically start within the range of their personal best of last year. Even athletes who come from, let's just say football, and they join back with me in the winter, they don't just hop into competition. They go through that same four to five weeks base training to convert their body from football to track and field. It's very important that you guys focus on the transition where it's safe, getting your body in shape for that event, and then go from there. So that's why I personally don't do private training anymore. I'm pretty sure there are trainers out there that will take your money and train you privately and have you doing those random back tuck flip handstands from day one. That's just not who I am or the brand that I represent. Please make sure to subscribe, like, share. I have a lot of videos. If you have any further questions about other things, first start by going to my YouTube page, the link's down below, and type in the search engine. And just type in keywords and you're gonna find a lot of videos. I wanna say I have close to 400 or 500 videos uh, total so far in my database. Search those things. Then if you have any further questions, email me at info at keenanbriggs.com.